go. Streaming from South Africa to the world. To the world. This is the Stonks Go Moon podcast. What just happened? We break it down so you don't have to. Right, let's rock and roll. Welcome everyone to the Stonks Go Moon podcast. My guest today, very special guest. His name is Daniel Strauss. He's a venture capital entrepreneur and best-selling author of the book, The Billionaire Mindset. Daniel, how are you? No, great. Thanks for having me, Rocco. I'm so stoked. It's called the billionaire mindset and not the millionaire mindset for a reason. Daniel, let's get right into it. Um, What do you look for when deciding to invest in a company? I know you've got quite a few, but if you can give us one or two, that would be awesome. I think number one is the entrepreneur. Of course, we don't really, the stage at which we invest, we don't really invest in a company. We invest in a person. Yeah. So the entrepreneur specifically. And then if we go further, are they solving a real problem? How did they identify this problem? How big is the problem? Um, who has this problem? And do they have the money to pay you to solve this problem? So what, what, what we found is that any entrepreneur who's not solving a real problem for someone else won't be an entrepreneur for long. That makes a lot of sense because you get a lot of these tech companies, right? That they build these massive followings of these massive users, but they're actually not doing anything, but still they get funded. So that's awesome to hear that you focus on, you know, the real world problems getting solved. Yes. So um, as I say, if they don't solve problems, they won't be entrepreneurs for long. What is, what is the distinction between a pure venture capitalist and you yourself branding as a venture capitalist entrepreneur? Because I haven't heard that before. Yes, so I think a lot of venture capitalists are fund managers. So they're a Uh, fund manager, a general partner of a fund structure with certain LPs where uh, me and my, uh, my business partner, we have a permanent capital structure. So we have founded a lot of the companies that we've invested in. We get operationally involved in a lot of them, but we also have a fund management arm that is like traditional venture capital. So we are entrepreneurs. So we sit on both sides of the table all the time, which I think gives you a little bit more of a balanced view when looking at certain opportunities to invest in. Yeah, because for me, if from a fund manager point of view, that you only look at the bottom line, right? And you only look at the ROI, and there's a bit of bit of it coming with ESG and looking at being responsible, but not that much. From an entrepreneur side, it's more the human factor. It's more of what does this person stand for, and and what what does he um, what does he want to achieve? Am I right? I think to a certain degree, yes, but in our view, since it's our own capital that we invest in the permanent capital structure, we have more freedom to do do certain deals that other venture capitalists won't be able to do due to a narrow mandate or processes or, or certain restrictions that they have from their LPs. So I, they, we're much more entrepreneurial, I think, even when looking from the investor side, we, we've got more freedom to add value than, than typical fund managers. That's really interesting. Speaking about adding value, um, what are some of the industries that you are looking to invest in and why? What, what is exciting you at the moment? Wow, we have made a lot of biotech investments recently, also fintech. But essentially, I looked at at all our investments recently, and the only real theme that I could find was that they are very focused on intellectual property. So for instance, one of our first investments um, is in the music industry. We own a big part of a record label. Um, and I mean, what is sorry, favorite kind uh, of music? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I actually like almost anything. That's um, a good I answer. Really, 
uh, anything upbeat. Yeah, I'm actually quite a, a happy-go-lucky person. Yeah, the world is far too working. negative. Yeah, so you were talking, I'm sorry, I interrupted you rudely. Uh, you were talking about music. Yeah, so the, the, the real golden thread is intellectual property. Um, anything where um, intellectual property is created um, almost from nothing, and then it gets put onto a platform, and then it gets monetized in, in that sense. Um, because in the end, content is king still, and, and you can almost look, look at that from, from any perspective in any industry, especially where the world is moving at the moment. That's really smart because I'm assuming where IP is involved, there are royalties involved as well. Yes, sometimes. But um, I think one of the challenges at the moment is almost nobody knows how to do a valuation on intellectual oh. property. So most investors or traditional financial institutions um, really discount the value of intellectual property. Um, and a lot of companies don't even put the IP on their balance sheets. Yeah, so, because they don't know how to value it. Makes sense. Yes. And for instance, I mean, we recently invested in a very traditional manufacturing business, but they have 11 patents. Wow. And any other investor who looked at them said, well, we are not putting any value on these patents. And yet none of the competitors can really compete with them on their products because of the patents. <laughs> and and the, so there's a significant opportunity in the market at the moment for people who's willing to, to take a punt on, on strong intellectual property. That's a good tip for the listeners. Uh, Daniel, before I let you go, um, what is the difference between venture capitalism as an industry in South Africa and let's say somewhere big like Silicon Valley in the US? I think one of the biggest differences is the amount of capital available. So, and since there's less capital available, the investors are a lot less um, willing to take risks. So almost like it has to work. Yeah. And I believe that South Africa is at least 20 years behind Silicon Valley. Wow. in the way in which they look at funding businesses and growing them. I mean, in 2021, we still get some funders who fund a business by putting the capital into the business as a loan. And then they take the equity for free and they yeah. call it an equity investment. Yeah. But then that, that, that investment sits on the balance sheet as debt. And that's a very big prob problem when you're looking for follow-on funding if this investor isn't willing to convert that debt to equity before the next investor comes in. So it's actually the kiss of death to a lot of these startups. So what, in your opinion, needs to change in the South African landscape? Education, and not necessarily entrepreneurial education, investor education. That's a good one. Daniel, I'm going to leave you on that note. If people want to connect with you and see what you're up to, where can they do that? At official Daniel Strauss on Instagram. And I'm also quite active on LinkedIn, just Daniel Strauss. Go follow the man. He is absolutely electric. To our listeners, peace, love, and prosperity. And we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers. Cheers.